You will have, have to, to move, move along. One of your friends said the same thing. You too, buddy. Go on. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? I'd like to ask you one myself. What? Do you mind telling me what on earth you keep looking in your pockets for? To find out what's in them. I'm glad you've explained. And what did you want to know? What city this is. Maybe we shouldn't have started talking in the first place. I mean it. I really don't know where you are. I don't even know who I am. Well, I don't know that. But I do know you're in Boston. Look, I don't want to have to run you folks in. That's very sweet of you. remember anything? Do you live in Boston? I don't know. I'm still rather shaky. Oh, you've been hurt. I got a crack on the head somewhere. Whatever happened, it certainly didn't do you any good. It looks as though you have a bad case of amnesia. Amnesia, you know, a uh, lapse of memory. Maybe. I can't remember. Of course you can't remember. That's what amnesia is. Whatever it is, it's a nasty feeling not knowing your own name. You don't by any chance happen to recognize me. No. You're one of the few millions I've never met. Look, DR, RD. Which is it? Oh, they would be wrapped around each other. I don't know. Well, at least I know my initials are DR, or vice versa. What do I look like? Is it that bad? Oh, no. You're rather nice looking. Dark eyes. Brown hair. And, well, <laughs> nose. Ears. Don't you remember anything about yourself? All I know is... I first saw the world under a lamppost marked... Mason Park Drive. The junk I found in my pocket didn't tell me a thing. A package of cigarettes. They're just Stacia. I've never heard of that brand. Neither have I that I know of. Two theater stubs, a folder of matches, 
and eighteen dollars and eleven cents. Look, Imperial Theater. You must have gone to see Olga Kona starring there in the play called The Dark Menace. Sounds interesting, anyway. Matches from the Blue Room. The Yorkshire Arms. Perhaps you took her there dancing. Who? The girl you took to the theatre. Do you imagine I'm married? I wouldn't be able to tell. That's usually the first thing men forget. A little cynical. The way I feel in this lovely grey dawn, you could tie the world to an anchor and drown it. What's the matter? Here comes Willie again. What's your name? Marie Smith. You've been in the park all night? Yes. Why? Well, you see, it seemed I had to have money to persuade my landlady to let me stay in my room. I didn't. She wouldn't. You know, they don't seem to trust actresses around here. Out of a job? Mm-hmm. The show got stranded. What have you been doing for food? I haven't. How long since you've had something to eat? Oh, yesterday morning, before my landlady kissed me goodbye. Why didn't you say something? We could have talked just as well over ham and eggs. I don't think I'd have talked much. Come on, we'll find a restaurant. Not yet. Not until I've taken you to a police station to help find out who you are. All right. You might get lost again. Mason Park. Here. Seems to explain why I was in the park, doesn't it? It isn't any proof. No use kidding myself. When I came to, there was blood on my hands. But you had a cut on your head. It could have come from that. Does the name Richard Denning Recall anything? Have you heard it before? I don't know. But I must be mixed up in it somewhere. I guess this is as far as we go together. Oh, why? I don't want to drag you into any trouble. You can't afford to be seen with me. Oh, but you'll need help. I'll get along. Here, you go someplace and get some food. And thanks. I'm going with you. It won't do any good. I don't believe you did it. And we're going to find out who you are and... Richard Denning, producer of the current hit Dark Menace, was found murdered last night. And according to police, first leads indicate robbery as the motive. Although Denning is said to have drawn $500 from the theater box office last night, no money was found on the body. Police are searching for a man seen in front of the estate early this morning, described as of medium height, wearing a dark pinstripe suit. Everything okay? Just dandy. Good. If you want something else, just holler. What's the matter? I guess I didn't look in all my pockets. Just 500. So you were in his house. It looks like it. But I couldn't have killed him. You don't know. That money is all the proof the police will need. You haven't a chance. 
Listen, you've got to get out of town before they arrest you. I'm going to stay. But if you... They'll get me anyway. This is the only place I can find out about myself. It's the only way I'll know if I have, have any defense. Maybe you're right. But you can't go around in that suit. I'll get another one. And find an out-of-the-way place to stay. Well, my boarding house is all of that. Where is it? 1843 Winfield. 1843 Winfield. Here. You square things with your landlady and I'll meet you there. I hope. Nothing like a new suit to change a man's appearance, eh? That's a mighty handsome outfit on you. You couldn't have chosen better cloth. It's absolutely imported. We make a sport model in that, too. Double-breasted, pointed peak lapel, balloon trousers, accordion pleated, double wing back. It's called the conservative collegiate. Yes, I can imagine it. Say, what do you know about this Denning murder? Nothing. Why? I thought you might have heard something new before you came in. All I could get was an early edition when I came to work. Not much detail. Vicious crime, wasn't it? Yes, it was. How much do I owe you? I certainly would like to work on that case. Work on it? Yes, indeed. I'm something of an amateur criminologist. <laughs> Always did have quite a flair for it. I solved the Cardoza killing. You... You worked with the police? No. No, I worked it all out at home. But the police and I picked the same man. Oh, boy! Boy! Good morning, Mr. Pinkney. Thanks. <whistles> now, that's what I call a real clue. Say, listen to this. Denning chauffeur vanishes. Duke Reed, discharged last week by Richard Denning after a violent quarrel, disappeared from his home in Brookline the morning of the murder. According to the latest information... What was that chauffeur's name? Duke Reed. Now, if I were... How much do I owe you? Oh, $47.50. I get so excited in these criminal cases. Now, in that Cordoza thing, half the time, I couldn't tend to my business. There's your change. Wait a minute. Here's your old suit. Sorry, I almost forgot it. You know, I may solve this case. Yes, I was thinking that myself. My house is clean, quiet, and respectable. And the rate is $10.50 a week in advance. I'll take it. And thank you very much. What's your name? Oh, didn't Miss Smith tell you? She did not. It's, uh, Robbins. David Robbins. What's yours? Potter. Another thing, I asked the guest to be particularly careful of my antimacassars. I thought she'd never go. Did you read this about Duke Reed, the chauffeur? It looks as though I found out who I am with that DR in the hat. If you reverse them to RD, they stand for Richard Denning. Yes, I thought of that too, but it didn't get me anywhere. I'm certainly not Denning. You certainly don't look like a chauffeur. It's the new suit and the hat. They make a difference. Where are the old ones? At the bottom of the bay. Well... Even a new suit won't help you if you are, Reed. Listen. Why don't you leave town while you're still free? You won't be safe here or, or anywhere else in the city. Hundreds of people can identify Denning's chauffeur. I'm going to prove whether I'm Reed or not. How? The paper said he had a room in his aunt's house in Brookline. But you aren't going there. Right now. Are you mad? Do you realize the police will be all over that place? If they are, I won't go up to the house. 
Oh, I suppose you'll walk straight on past and climb into a policeman's pocket. I wanted to help you because I thought you were sane and needed help. But you're going stark, staring crazy. And you can count me out. I never even counted you in on this trip. It's too dangerous. I'm going with you anyway. Wait till I get my hat. How do you do? Could I... There's nobody home. She didn't know me. This is the right house, too. And you're not Reed. I wanted to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. I told you there's nobody home. I've talked to reporters all day. They've yelled at me. The police have yelled at me. I don't know anything. Nobody could talk that much and not know anything. Try it again. Listen, I've only worked here two days. I've never seen this Reed man, and I don't want to talk anymore. Well, there goes that hope. She doesn't even know what Reed looks like. You want me to call the police? Would you mind letting us see Dr. Reed? I don't. Well, I might, just for a few minutes. Come in. Well, this is awfully nice of you. It's awfully nice of you. You better not take too long. Mr. Reed's aunt will be back in about an hour. Thank you. Thank you. You uh, don't happen to remember those, do you? No. Sometimes forgetting comes in handy. No initials in it. I still say it's the man in the pinstripe suit. Now, you take my theory. Yeah, well, you take your theory and run it in your news column. The bird I want to see is this Duke Reed and find out why he came back twice after having been fired and slashed the tires on Denning's cars. If he's the kind of a guy to do petty stuff like that, he's not the type of a fellow that would kill anyone. Now, that's my theory, and I'm going to stick to it. Now, look, Hillier, I haven't got time to listen to any yapping reporter. There's nobody home. I don't care if there's nobody home or not. Don't you try and shut that door in my face. He's Inspector Florio from headquarters. Oh, I'm sorry. You weren't here before. No, but I'm here now, and I happen to be in charge of this case. Well, that just about cinches things. And just where is this aunt of Duke Reed's? She won't be back for an hour. Might as well go out to Denning's place. I want to look inside that joint. The cops didn't... The what? The police wouldn't let me in the last time I was there. Well, who's that? Um, uh, nobody. The cat, I guess. Sweet child, you ought to teach another shut doors. What are you doing in here? Looking. Who are you? Who are you? Florio, police headquarters. What's your name? John Smith. Oh. And who are you? She's my cousin. Well, what are you looking for? A story. He's a newspaper reporter. Answer your own questions. She hasn't asked any. What is your name? Marie Smith. Marie Smith. Well, it's as good a name as any. You wouldn't happen by chance to be Duke Reed. Don't you know? No, we haven't any pictures of him as yet. But you'd pass for him from his description. <laughs> wouldn't that make a good story, Johnny? Special correspondent mistaken for murderer. What paper are you on? 
the uh, Seattle Chronicle. You keep out of this. Lay off, Marie, will you? Stop butting in. Let me answer the man. His questions are so silly. You got here in a hurry from Seattle. He was already here. He's been visiting me. Were you assigned to this case? No, I'm writing some special articles. Let me in on this, will you, Florio? I'll tell you if this guy is a phony or not. Oh, you think so, eh? Who's the city editor on the Seattle Chronicle? Oh, do you know Bill Colby? I've heard of him. He's an awful grouch. Mr. Harrison was telling me about him when he came east last year. Remember the argument you had with him on the strike story? By the way, Mr. Harrison's managing editor. Do you happen to know him, too? So what? Are those the right editors? Yeah. Well, then they know, don't they? Look, look. I know, but I haven't got time to stand here jawing about newspapers. This fellow seems all right to me, and he acts dumb enough to be a reporter. Let's get to Dennings. You're going with us. I want you to see where Denning was murdered. You might have an idea that would help. It's awfully nice of you to give us the chance. I was going to ask the department if I could look the place over. Hmm. Well, let's go. Charming girl, your niece. My cousin. Plenty of bloodstains. Nice messy job, eh, Smith? He evidently stood over Denning's body long enough to get blood on his shoes. And the way these footprints stagger, he must have been drunk. Or injured. Yeah. What I can't do about is why the footprints lead to the front door and the window's wide open. Somebody drop this under it. It's a hot love letter to Denning. Hey, that's a good yarn. Who signed it? You're loaded, bud. What's the matter, Smith? I thought you were interested in good news stories. Think of that headline. Passionate love note found near a body of murdered producer signed Lotus Bud. Then what would you say? Police pick flowers? I told O'Brien to bring that butler down. What's the matter with him? Well, he's probably giving him another shot of smelling sauce. He's had the yips all day. Can he identify you, Green? Yeah. I, I, I've told him everything I know. Somebody's got to believe me sometime. I can't go on talking forever. I, oh. Are you fish? Yes, sir. Is he Duke Reed? No, sir, that's not him. He isn't any chauffeur? No, sir, I just told you that isn't Mr. Reed. Who is he? I don't know, sir. I've never seen him before. Am I supposed to know who he is? I guess I owe you an apology, Smith. That lets me out, eh? Yeah. But stick around a while. Looks like you were wrong, too. If I am, it's the first time since I was born. And that time your parents were wrong. Yes. No. Didn't you tell McCord here that you heard Dunning quarreling with some man in the living room around midnight? You did, didn't you? Yes, sir. But you didn't hear the shot that killed him? No, sir. I see. You could hear people talking, but you couldn't hear a gun go off. Do you expect me to believe that? Well, I shall be very disappointed if you don't. Why didn't you hear that gun go off? Well, I expect it was because it was later. How do you know it was later if you didn't hear it? I don't know. I can't say. I get so nervous around here with all these policemen knocking on my bedroom door. Why didn't you hear that gun go off? Well, I expect it's because I'm afraid of the dark. What's the dark got to do with it? Well, you see... I sleep with the covers over me head. And with the covers over your head when you heard the quarrel? No, oh. I heard it going through the hall to the stairs. Mr. Denning was very angry. He sort of shouted, Do you think you can make me pay off with that kind of proof? Then this other man says, You ain't heard the art of it yet. What about this? Then they don't say anything for a minute. Then this other man says, Very even-like, you keep it up. And someone's going to pump a couple of slugs into you. What are slugs? What else did he say? Well, I don't know, sir. You see, because then... Then you I... went upstairs and went to bed. You probably slept well, too. Oh, no, sir, no, sir. You see, when Mr. Denning quarrels with people, he gets upset. And then I get upset, and what with my sciatica... Never mind your sciatica. You say that Mr. Denning quarreled with a lot of people? Yes, sir. Did you see this other man? No, sir. They were in the living room. Oh, you mean they weren't quarreling in here? 
No, sir, they were in the living room. Could you recognize the other man's voice if you heard it again? Yes, sir, I think I could. Smith, say those words. What words? You keep it up and someone's going to pump a couple of slugs into you. Say them loud. You keep it up and someone's going to pump a couple of slugs into you. Is that the voice? Well, I reckon I can't tell, sir. All voices sort of seem to sound alike to me. You can go, Fish. Thank you, sir. Can I lock my bedroom door? Yes. Or no. Stay downstairs. Well, that should satisfy you that Johnny's on the level. Hey, Florio, here's something. Denning was killed last night before. And that page has been torn off here. Doesn't a guy usually wait until the next day to correct the date? Suppose you figure it out. I usually tear mine off at night. I saw a calendar page like that somewhere. The living room. Where they were quarreling, huh? Yeah. Show me. Is this room just as it was when Denning's body was found? That's right. Did the murderer leave those desk drawers open? Yeah. Looks like he took the $500 off the body and then went to the desk looking for other valuables. Why? I was just wondering what kind of valuables he was looking for to make him rummage through that pile of manuscripts. Not a bad thought, Smith. You may be of some help to us yet. You know anything about stage royalties? No. I do. Well, doesn't the author usually get all the royalty? Yes. Mike, look at this account book. Royalties on the stage play Dark Menace. Did the Stuart Eldridge write it? Yeah, he's the guy. Hmm. Over $800 every week, and Denning's been chiseling him out of 400 of it. Well, I wouldn't doubt it from everything I've heard about him. I found it, Florio. There's your calendar page. It was sticking out of this manuscript. That's Denning's handwriting. Appointment with F.A. at 1130. Must be the guy's initials he was in there fighting with last night. Or any one of a hundred people he did business with. It might mean 11.30 this morning. Ever hear of a fellow who wrote that? Kenneth Orme? Yeah. No. Don't tell me I'm not coming in. I am coming in. No one shall stop me this time. I should come all the way out here. For my soul I come. My beloved Amati. I will have it. But Mr. Denning isn't at home. He's dead. Oh, you think you are telling me? I know it. That's why I'm here. For the last time I am here. No longer I wait. He's still my beloved Awati. Out of my way. I have the money. Here. Where do you think you're going? Uh, you or no one else can stop me. That is my Amati. Hey, let that fiddle alone. Fiddle? You call that a fiddle? It is an Amati. My Amati. Monsieur, do you know what is an Amati? With a soul, this instrument, the finest in the world. It is my inspiration, my heart, my all, and it belongs to me, to Carlos G, to me, you hear? Uh, you vandal, if you break it, I kill you. Yeah, well, you lay off this and start talking. What are you doing here? To get my Amati, I come. I have the money, the $200, and the recipe. Oh, what you say? Oh, receipt. Yes, from Denning, this proves it. He is a dog. I lead one of his orchestra. I get hard up, he lends me the money and takes my Amati. Last night I come to pay him back. What do you think he does? He does not give me my Amati. He knows that it is the great Amati. He keeps it. But now that he is dead, I take it. Get away from him. You were here last night. But certainly, I already say it. So was he. You murdered him to get your fiddle. Stop calling that a fiddle! You killed Denning. If you call that a fiddle. Who, me? Oh, but, monsieur, I never kill anybody, any place. I'm a musician, not a murderer. You're here with Denning. Listen. You keep it up and someone's going to pump a couple of slugs into you. I kill you, too. That's him. What? That's him. That's the one. That's the voice I heard. The same voice. Oh, it was, eh? No, not him. Him. You was the one I heard talking. Will you get out of here? Here, you are. Hello? Hello? Brian, grab this nut. Inspector, headquarters wants you on the phone. Uh, Go show him, bitch. Did I tell uh, you? Yeah? They have? Wait a minute. They traced one of the $100 bills. A man in a pinstripe suit found one off in a clothing store. 
They've got the salesman at headquarters. Can he identify this man? I got him here, and I'm bringing him right down. Smith, you better uh, give McCord your address. I may want you later. O'Brien, 1843 Winfield. 1843 Winfield. Coming down to headquarters with a Smith? Great story for you. No thanks. I've got enough material for my article today. McCord, bring along this crackpot fiddler. Me, a fiddler? Yeah, and shut up. How dare you? Go right ahead and mop. You would want to spend a few quiet minutes at the Duke Reed house. Well, at least I know I'm not Reed. So what? You're not Carlo Geet either, but that doesn't help any. If Florio had searched me and found those bills, You take care of the money from now on. There's nothing like a couple of hours with the police to get a person sensible. How did you happen to know so much about the Seattle Chronicle? They panned our show when it played there. But you should have heard the explosion when our press agents tangled with those editors. <laughs> you know, I'm awfully glad you came along. You should be. And remember, you're John Smith when Mr. Hillier's in the neighborhood. You seem to like him. I adore him. The way he pokes his nose into everything, he reminds me of an anteater. Don't lose sight of him. I'm on him like a leech. He's been pretty regular, Marie, helping me this way. I haven't been much help so far. I don't know what we can do now to find out who you are. The police are too close for our comfort. We'll find a way somehow. You shouldn't do so much worrying about me. A woman always has to have something to worry about. And it's nicer to worry about you than sit on a park bench, worrying about the whole world. I wonder. Look, I'd forgotten about this. The Yorkshire Arms. Maybe the doorman will remember you. We'll ask everyone in the place. Driver, Yorkshire Arms. Do you happen to remember me? I regret to say I don't, sir. So do I. Well, hello again. Well, fancy meeting you here. What are you doing, following us? Out of your life, my sweet tempered little charmer. I'm here for an interview with Olga Kona. She lives here. Is she the girl that stars in Dark Menace? Yeah. You know, she and the course were love's gift of romance for a couple of years, and the man who became our leading man, now they're practically wrecking each other with devotion. Very much in love, huh? Oh, sure. They fight all the time. She seemed to know you. Who is she? Cora, the name I was telling you about. You don't know each other, huh? I never saw her before. I thought you wanted an interview with her. Fat chance with Mansfield around. He's so jealous he thinks every guy inside of a mile is flirting with her. You certainly take life easy for a reporter. What are you doing for your paper? I sent in a wire on the read angle this morning. I'll get another one off tonight. So? Let's see. Tomorrow, Seattle papers ought to be in here by Sunday. I'll have to read your articles. Find out how you managed to do them without working. Lucky stiff. 
Now, so long. So long. Bad news. Jit. Jit, darling. Jitney, where on earth did you disappear to? Why, I, uh... I had a lot of important business. But you didn't even phone. I didn't. I was up to my ears. Believe me. I waited here three hours yesterday. I know. I'm terribly sorry, but the men absolutely wouldn't let me go. You're too popular. I'm beginning to find that out. But all that's over now, isn't it? You won't run away again. No. I guess I can finish up the rest of the things tomorrow. Um, what would you like to do? Well, we can go into the blue room and have a cocktail, to start with. To start with? Yes, of course. Uh, Miss Smith. Yes, sir. I'll finish up those papers in the morning. Tell uh, <clears throat> Mr. Ramsey I'll drop into his office tomorrow. Yes, sir. You'll probably have a great deal to tell him. Undoubtedly. Uh, Mr. Ramsey's secretary. A very pretty girl. Yes, she is. You say that as if you meant it. You wouldn't happen to be jealous. What do you think? I wouldn't know. Now, madame? Oh, well, yes, a Bacardi cocktail. And you, monsieur? Scotch. Straight. I've been worried about you. Really? Why? When you didn't show up, I was afraid you might have got mixed up in Denning's murder. What made you think that? What else could I think? He was killed the night we saw the show. And he certainly seemed afraid of you when you were arguing with him in the foyer. You saw me arguing with Denning? Of course I did, when I came out of the lounge at the end of the second act. I didn't know whether you were threatening him or quoting Bert Mansfield's line from the play. Which line? Well, you said to him, you keep this up and someone's going to pump a couple of slugs into you. Why, that's the same. Mansfield said that in the play? Certainly. In the second act curtain scene with Olga Coleman. today. What's the matter with you? Don't you remember it? Sure. Now that you recall it, I remember quoting it. So you think I was mixed up in his death because you saw me arguing? I didn't know. I thought you might have had a date with him after the show. The way you rushed me back here after it was over and then rushed away again. And then I read the paper and you never did tell me what that was all about. You just cooked yourself up a lot of worry over nothing. I didn't have any date with him. I'm glad of that. But what were you arguing with him about? I just happened to say I didn't like the second act. It was like waving a red flag in front of a bull. Still won't tell me anything. Curious young lady, aren't you? <laughs> the way you've been playing the vanishing American would make a sphinx curious. Was Denning one of the reasons you made this business trip? What's the matter, Jidney? Going to cut me dead? Why, no! I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Oh, uh, allow me to present... <coughs> Stuart Eldridge, the famous author of Dark Menace. Thank you. A charming compliment from a very charming lady. Thank you. Oh, Stuart, I want you to know... <coughs> My name is Irene Lassiter. How do you do? I'm so sorry, Irene. It's all right, Jitney. You're forgiven. We managed to meet each other anyhow. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to apologize, Jitney. When I passed and you didn't recognize me, I thought you were angry with me for the way I treated you yesterday. Oh, that's all right. Would you care to join us, Stuart? Delighted. Uh, 
and I rushed by you. I was making a dash to keep an appointment with my publishers. I got thinking later how rude I'd been. A rotten way to treat an old classmate who goes to the trouble to look you up. Forget it. I, I hope you'll forgive us for neglecting you. We haven't seen each other for three years. You know, you're very beautiful. Well, thank you, kind sir. That's all right. How did you happen to recognize me? Why, don't you realize that every girl thrills over your photographs? Oh, now, please. We're getting along splendidly. <laughs> Tiffany, I'm afraid I'll have to steal her away from you. May I have this dance? If Jit doesn't mind. Not at all. Waiter. Yes, sir. Another scarf. Eldridge. Yes? Mr. Mansfield will see you in the lobby. Thank you. Yes, sir. There he is. Want to talk to me, Mansfield? No, I spoke to you before. This time I'll make myself clear. <laughs> Bring it up. Come on, get out. Are you all right? Excuse me, please. What happened? Oh, it was awful. Mansfield acted like a maniac without any excuse at all. He hit him. I wouldn't let it upset you. I can't help it. I hate fights. It couldn't have been much of a fight. Let's go back and... I don't feel like dancing. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to my room. Will you call me this evening? What's Stuart Eldridge's room number? Mr. Eldridge, uh, a 478, sir. Thank you. Hello, Stuart. You alone? Oh, uh, yes, Sidney. Come in. Thanks. Sorry our party got broken up. Yeah, so am I. That chap Mansfield's been a troublemaker ever since I tried to keep him out of the cast of Dark Menace. That's a shame. Well, those things happened, Tiffany. Funny hearing that nickname again. No one's used it very much since we got out of college. That's so? What do they call you now? Ford? Yes. More dignified, eh? I'll never forget the time Kenneth Orme first tagged you with that nickname, Tiffany. I didn't like it very much. Honey, you certainly laughed about it at the time. Did I? It's so long ago, I didn't remember. Sit down, Jip. Uh, Ford. <laughs> Thanks. Where were you when Ken died? Out west. Must have been an awful shock to you. Rotten stuff, Tomain poisoning. We lunched off some seafood we had in the apartment. When I came back in the afternoon, I found him. You know, I hate to think about it. Will you have a drink? No, thanks. I guess the last time you saw Ken was when you dropped in on us at the apartment. That's right. That's the last picture he had taken. Did you get one? No. That's not the right picture. Don't you know Orm's face when you see it? <sighs> Why, of course. I was just noticing this other chap. Who's he? You wouldn't know him. Tell me, Denny. Did you come to Boston to see Denning? No. Why? I read in the paper that the police had found a calendar page of Denning's with an appointment on it. F.A. Same initials as yours. I read that too. Funny coincidence, isn't it? Yes. Funny coincidence. Too bad Kenneth didn't live to see his play produced. What play? Two O'Clock Courage. 
Denning was interested in it. Where did you learn that? A reporter told me the police found a copy of it in Denning's living room today. Well, I, I never knew Ken wrote a play, did you? No. <laughs> Imagine Ken wanting to be a playwright. Good night. Will you excuse me? I've got to keep an appointment. Why, of course. See, I'm terribly sorry running out on you all the time like this, but I'm very busy these days. Let's get together tomorrow, hmm? I'll telephone you. Why, of course, you do that. So long. So long. Oh, Stuart! Enter the villain. You make it rather embarrassing, Mr. Adams. But I warned you I was going to steal the charming young lady away from you. Jit, I'm, I'm sorry. I... It's all right. Don't apologize. Ford Adams salutes you. Get me a flock of nickels. Yes, please. sir. Abbey Hotel? Have you got a Ford Adams registered there? Thank you. Sorry, the line's busy. Ice water for 420? Hello, Harry. Take your foot off that chair. Yorkshire Barroom. Just a moment, please. Any calls for me, Don? I'll say I have. That boss of yours has been tearing his hair trying to find you. Wait, I'll call him for you. Take boost one. Hilliard, where have you been? I've been trying to... What? Following Kona? Well, interview her later. They've captured... I said forget Kona. They captured Duke Reed on a New Haven train. Get down to South Station. They bring him right in. I got a sticker on this lead. It's hot. And if it breaks, you can go to town on that front page. Yeah? Well, fired or not, I'm gonna stick here and interview Kona. Get somebody else to cover Reed. So they finally caught up with you. Oh, another tough cop. Huh? The inspector in charge. No wonder this case hasn't been solved. Up to now. Get in there. Okay. Largest dish, huh? Still smoking Denning cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah, I stole a few cartons. And I cut the tires on the cars, too, but it's only gonna pin on me, Flatfoot. If you're looking for some guy in the third degree, you better take out this fellow Mansfield. Oh, you start passing the buck already, huh? I'm not passing any buck. He was out there quoting with Denning the night before the murder. How do you know? That's not a game. The tires are going over. Mansfield's car was in the driveway, so I looked in the library window. He was there, all right, and plenty sore. He told Dan to keep away from that corner, Dan, or he'd kill him. What did Denning say? He said as long as Corner kept wanting to see him, he'd let her. Then you got your story all fixed up, haven't you? Why lie about the truth? You find Mansfield, and I'll prove it. Woodley Hotel. Have you got a Ford Adams registered there? Thank you. Yorkshire Barnes. Uh, desk, please. Just a moment, please. Have you got a Ford Adams registered there? Uh, just a minute, please. Uh, Ford Adams, yes, sir. Room 312. Thank you. Key, please. 
Adams, 312. Any mail? No, sir. Uh, someone just phoned to ask if you were registered. He didn't leave any message. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is Fort Adams speaking, room 312. Will you get me Mrs. Potter, 1843 Winfield? Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Potter, this is Fort Robbins, David Robbins speaking. Is Miss Smith there? Has she phoned? She hasn't. I'll call later. Thank you. doing in my apartment? Wait Why, I... a minute. I'm Hillier, Boston Dispatch. I want a... A reporter? Yeah, I want to get an interview. Get out of here. You've got a nerve breaking into my apartment. Don't you put on an act for me and pretend to kick him out. I'm shut up. Don't shut me up. I'm getting tired of finding men in your apartment. Where'd you fool and as a reporter? Sure, the last time it was a playwright. That's why you asked me downstairs not to come up. Afraid I'd find him here. Look, she's telling the truth. I... Get out. You get out of here before I knock your head off. a minute, Mansfield. Why? Who are you? Oh. Do you know this man? Why, well, yes, he, he's Denning's chauffeur. You finally caught up with him, eh? Yes, he tells me you were at Denning's the night before the murder. He's crazy. You threatened to kill Denning. That's a lie. Tell him the truth. They've got me on a murder rap. Get back there. Don't get excited. I'll handle this. You kill him to get the love letters she wrote to him. What love letters? Denning never told me that he's you He's lying. He's just trying to get you to say something. Denning never told you what? All right, I'll tell you. Denning was bothering Miss Conner, and I told him to cut it out. You were there, then? The night before he was killed, yes. Why did you lie about it? Well, when I found out he was dead, I knew how bad it'd look if I was mixed up in it. And that's the truth. I didn't kill him. Yeah? Well, come on, we'll go to headquarters anyway. Wait! You can't arrest Bert just because he was there the night before. You want the man who was with him the night he was killed. I think I know who he is. You started thinking pretty fast, didn't you? You bet I did. I just remembered, and you can take it for what it's worth. The night Denning was killed, he came backstage after the second act, mad as a hatter. He was swearing about somebody named Ford Adams. He told one of the actors, Frank Thompson, that he couldn't go with him to the nightclub, but he'd drop him off there. He said he had to come over here to the Yorkshire Arms and pick up a man. That's a pretty good yarn. Come on, you. Call up Thompson if you don't believe me. Wait a minute for you. She sounds on the level. That name Ford Adams ties up with the initials on the calendar page. Appointment with F.A. That's right. Did Denning say he was coming to this hotel for Adams? Yes. Give me the room, clerk. Have you got a guy registered here named Ford Adams? 312. You stay here. Watch this. check out yet? No. Well, he's gone, so is his baggage. His baggage? Yeah. I'll tell the hotel detective. 
Fine, that ought to help a lot. A uh, boy, here. You off your arms. Dolly, give me some help, will you? Sure. Another out of your boss? No. Do you know what that guy Adams looks like in 312? No. Well, see if he made any outgoing calls from his room today. Oh, Harry, you know that's against the rules. Come on, I'm in a spot. Give me a break. Blue room? Just a moment, please. Yorkshire Arms. Come on, come on. Oh, he made a call about 20 minutes ago. A Mrs. Potter at 1843 Winfield. 1843 Win. Give me. Yorkshire Arms. I'd like to talk to Mr. Ford Adams, please. I don't know any Ford Adams. He doesn't live here. Your phone number is Elliot 1461. Yeah. That's funny. This is the address he gave me, and I thought I had his name right, too. Who are your tenants? Well, let me see. There's Mr. Duff and Miss Smith, and then there's... Miss Ms. Marie Smith? Yes. But you're looking for a man. Yes, her cousin. He isn't Adams. His name's David Robbins. Oh, Robbins, huh? Wouldn't be Smith. No, it wouldn't. Is there anything else you want to know? No, thanks. That's funny. Why, don't tell me it's you. I wouldn't try to tell you anything. What are you doing around here? Same old thing, helping the cops find the man in the pinstripe suit. I can't get over the sudden rush of prosperity to the torso. Why, you're positively gorgeous. Did you, you say your cousin's name was Smith? What are you driving at? Why does he call himself David Robbins? That's the name he writes under. Do you think anybody could be impressive signing an article, John Smith? You're pretty fast on your feet, aren't you? No, I hate to see a nice little girl like you get in a jam protecting a criminal. His real name is Ford Adams. Ford Adams? You're crazy. And he's not a criminal. Listen. You listen, Mr. Hillier. You've made enough remarks about Johnny. Keep it up, and we'll crack down on you with a libel suit that'll make those funny-looking ears of yours curl. This is Hillier. Well, I've located Adams for you. 1843 Winfield. Yeah? I'm in the drugstore across the street from the place now. No, he isn't home, but you can stake out the joint. Yeah, you've met him. His name's Smith. I found out well. Who... You're beautiful. Was she your wife? And you're the same girl I met in the park. Never mind about the girl in the park. What about the brunette in the hotel? Who? Oh, Miss Lassiter. Is that her name? Yeah. Where did you get the new? Who was she? Who, Lassiter? I don't know. The last I saw of her, she was in Stuart Eldridge's apartment, in his arms, kissing him. She was? Yeah. Where did you get the new outfit? The landlady let me have my trunk back when I paid for my rent. I don't like the way you went for that clothes horse. <laughs> I didn't go for her. Well, you certainly went away with her. And a good thing I did, too. I found out why I came to Boston. Here. Read that. My name's Ford Adams. Adams? Oh, no. No. That's who the police are hunting for. They must know that you're the man that wore the pinstripe suit. How do you know? Hillier just told me so. Listen, you've got to get away. You've got to get out of town. I've got to get a hold of that play, Two O'Clock Courage. That's what brought me here. It'll clear up the whole mess, I'm sure of it. No, you haven't a chance if they get you. You must get away. There's $400 left. Please, Johnny. 
I'll go with you. I'll do anything you like. You stay here and wait for me. Where are you going? Dennings. Come on, open this door. You can't break in my house like I'm this. I'm sorry, madam. You two search this lower floor. Please, don't tell them anything. You're marvelous. Miss Smith, eh? Where's Adams? I've never heard of the man in my life. Two fourteen Mason Park Drive. any court and you know it. If you don't make a new deal, I'm going to start legal action for Mrs. Orme tomorrow. All right, Adams, you win. Here's 500 on account. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Who are you? My name's Adams. Adams, eh? Up on your feet. Wait. I've got to find Florian. Take me to him. You bet I'll take you to him. You won't make me talk if it takes all night. Johnny! Listen, Florio. Well, where'd you get him? Denny's house. Well, get some bracelets on him. Wait, Florio. I know who killed Denny. You bet you do. Come on, get those bracelets on. Now, you're going to talk and talk plenty, Adams. You wore that pinstripe suit, and you're the one who went home with Denning. It's true, Bert. Certainly it's true. And you're going to tell it to a stenographer, where they'll have it in black and white. Now, take him to headquarters. Get going. Wait, Florio. Oh, you've got to listen. I didn't kill Denning. I wasn't threatening him when the butler heard me. Oh, you admit it was your voice. Yes, but I was reading from a play. You expect me to believe that? It's true. Oh, you should have tried out that story before. I couldn't remember. When I heard that shot and ran into the library, somebody hit me over the head. When I came to, I was out on the street. I didn't remember a thing that happened. I went back to Denning's house tonight to get that play. 
Someone shot at me. And it all came back. Take this mug out and Look lock for it. yourself. The bullet grazed my head. Stuart Eldridge stole that play. He didn't write it. Denning knew it. That's why he blackmailed him for those royalties. Wait a minute. Eldridge is the one that killed Denning. Those stage royalties, huh? Give me a chance. Let me get to Eldridge. All right. Come on, Hill. You bring the girl. No, Eldridge. You didn't kill me. Have you gone mad, Jet? <clears throat> what is all this? Come on, Eldridge, open up. We want to have a little talk with you about Denning. The police, I presume? That's right. Well, make yourselves at home, gentlemen. And the young lady? Never mind the introductions. Where did you learn to write plays, Eldridge? After you left college? That's right. Not bad for a man who flunked English four years in a row, couldn't even write a daily theme. Are you questioning the fact that I wrote Dark Menace? You didn't even rewrite it. You stole it. It's Two O'Clock Courage, written by Orm just before he died. You're very amusing, Jitney. Orm never wrote a play in his life. You said so yourself. And you looked plenty relieved when you thought I'd forgotten about it. You and I were the only ones who did know. That's why you took a shot at me in the library. Denning had a copy that Orm mailed to him. He held that over your head and bled you for plenty, didn't he? <laughs> Nonsense. Just a minute. Denning's records show he was getting half your royalties. That's easily explained, my dear sir, if you knew Denning. He demanded that graph to produce the play. It was my first and it was worth it to get it on. You can't get... Listen, Adams, I don't intend taking any more insults from you, police or no police. Now, you show some evidence to get out of here. Where is this play? Perhaps where the rest of Orm's copies went, in the fireplace. Pretty hot night for a fire, Eldridge. I'll take a look if it isn't too late. There's some old papers. But important ones. You had to get that last copy, didn't you? You were hunting for it in Denning's library when he surprised you and you killed him. Get this man out of my apartment. I won't stand any more of this rot. If you've got any charges to make against me, make them or get out with him. Wait a minute. I caught her in the lobby. You can't drag me into this, do you think? Shut up. I won't shut up. I won't get mixed up in any murder. You got me into this, you can get me out of it. What do you know about the murder? I don't know anything. All I did was get acquainted with Adams. And Stuart put me up to that. He told me to get acquainted with him and find out why he was here and see if he had any business with Denning. That's all I did. A very amusing tale. Is this part of your frame-up? Adams introduced me to this young lady. You got acquainted fast enough. You framed the meeting yourself. Better get your coat, Eldridge. Will I be staying overnight? Yes. Excuse me, please. Don't let him go. He'll escape. Don't worry. If he does that, it'll prove he's guilty, won't it? I've got men all around the hotel. Main four, 300. I guess you were right, Adams. Couldn't stand the gap of losing his glory. Hell, you're talking. Stuart Elder just committed suicide. Oh. Yeah, his apartment. Oh. Gloria was arresting him for Denny's murder. Went into the bedroom and shot himself. I'll call you back. Florio, this gun hasn't been fired. It's not suicide. He's been murdered. Let me see it. Main four, 300. Hey, there. Get out in the hall with Brian. Go to those other apartments and tell Craig to get in the hall below. Campbell, did you see anybody come down from this balcony? No. Stand by. You kill Eldridge. You think I was going to let him drag me out there where you were? He wouldn't spoil his sweet reputation and go to jail long enough to let me get away. He knew you killed Denning, huh? He was in it as much as I was. He was in that library with me. You killed Denning? He had it coming to him. Why did you kill him? He blackmailed me with those love letters long enough. And you can't drag me up all here right, so all well. All right, Come on, come on, let's get her out of here. Main 4-300. Johnny. His name isn't Johnny, it's Ford. Ford Adam. Hell, 
you talking? It wasn't suicide, it was murder. What? I have made up my mind. It was Olga Kona. Yeah, and she killed Denning, too. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? If the first question is the one I hope it is, then the answer is yes. Cousin from Seattle. 